Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Empire where we dominate the crypto market. I am your host for this live stream. My name is Connor. Welcome everybody to the stream. I appreciate you taking some time out of your Sunday nonetheless to spend with me here on this live stream. We will, we will be talking about a lot of important things such as the crypto bear market bottom. Is it in? Is it close? I personally think if it's not in already, it is extremely close. I do not think we make new lows past 16K, 15.5K. So we're gonna be talking about how to build your portfolio for this next bull run amongst a bunch of other important things. So strap in and get ready for another Sunday live stream. Big shout out to everybody here. Reverend Flashback saying, hi Connor, good to see you, how are you? I'm doing good, I appreciate you being here. We got Sinan Yalsin. What's up, Sinan? Steven Watson says, I'm not yet a subscriber. Never heard of Crypto Empire. I'll check it out. Well, you were in the right place, Steven Watson. It is, it is good to have you here and definitely check it out and let me know what you think. All day, Dre, McNaz, Andreas, CRO8. Shout out to everybody here for the live stream. Let's get things started with the crypto market overview. So taking a look at the market right now as it stands, Bitcoin trading for $26,168, ETH $1,686, everything since the crash, this big crash that happened last Thursday has been very, very quiet and sideways for the most part. So the market has been flat, altcoins have been flat, except for a few very low cap on-chain tokens which have... You know, one of them will just 50x in, in a day, and there's a new one every single day. It's essentially the crypto casino that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never sleeps. So we'll look at the gainers and losers on the day right now. And just as what I was talking about, Bitcoin, Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic, 10, Inu. This is the biggest meme coin essentially right now. He's up 33% on the day, right? And other than that, a bunch of small caps are up. No no kind of big projects mid caps are doing anything right now but going sideways and looking at the biggest losers on the day right now again low caps for the most part um, and nothing really down too crazy either so the market overall is flat and sideways right now and we will be discussing what you should be doing during these flat boring and sideways times because this is when most people feel like giving up. Most people leave crypto. Most people just stop paying attention. And now really is the best time for maximum opportunity, especially after a big crash. We go to this daily price chart, especially after a big crash like this on Bitcoin. This, right, something like this, this is what we want to see. Because this gives us discounted prices on our altcoins that we want to hold into the next bull run. All right, so now is definitely not the time to be panicking, to be freaking out. You should be excited right now. You should be paying more attention than ever. Yes, we most likely do still have some time, six to 12 to maybe 18 months before this bull market really starts to take off, right? The Bitcoin halving isn't, isn't gonna be until next spring. So we do have some time still. There will be many runs during this time period where certain market sectors will explode. Something like when we saw the artificial intelligence sector ex explode in crypto starting December of last year, 2022. And we saw all the AI coins go crazy for months. We most likely have something similar to that as we do move closer to this next bull run. But the fun is coming. And now is the time where we have to be preparing so that we can just sit back, kick our feet up and sell when the bull market starts and just realize the gains. Hope that all makes sense, it should make sense. If you have any questions, ask them in the live chat. Everybody, I appreciate all of your support here. Let's see, Andrea says, hello my man Connor, bear market is just getting started. Andrea, I actually completely disagree with you. I think that the bottom is, if it's not in right now, it's very close to being in. And McNaz says, how are we doing? I'm doing great McNaz, appreciate that. Topi, what's up, Topi? D Jenny on the blockchain. We got Misash saying he loves this channel. Make money with Harry. Appreciate all of you guys being here. Be sure to smash that like button if you haven't smashed the like button already. It's time to move on. Let's take a look at our Bitcoin TA. 
and again not really too much to discuss here on the charts long story short we broke down from this descending wedge as you can see we tried to break out we cannot get above 30k right we tried we tested 30k over here over here in the beginning of august right august 8th that's 30k we reject off of it after breaking the descending wedge try and hold it as support but we fell right through it like a hot knife through butter now don't get me uh wrong this did drop more than i expected um on this huge sell-off this was a bit of a capitulation wick here and notice how it swept the June lows down here at $24,700. Okay, what I mean by it swept the June lows is price wicked below the, the level and it ended up closing the candle higher than the low. So this is known as a sweep. And this is not the worst thing to see in the world, right? I would consider this actually bullish, but what's gonna happen now? Let's, let's discuss what I think is gonna happen with Bitcoin right now. So, I don't think anything crazy or drastic is going to be happening from here. A lot of people might be in the camp that because we, if I draw a trend line like this, because we broke a trend line like this, right? We've been holding this all throughout the year. This was essentially the new bull market trend line. I can show you Ethereum as well. Ethereum also broke essentially the same exact trend line. Right, if we look at ETH. ETH also broke a huge trend line going back to the FTX crash last November. So definitely huge breaks in market structure right now should not be ignored at all, right? These trend lines were formed at the start of the year or right after the FTX crash last year in November, and now they just got broken. So what's going to happen now? Certainly, certainly a lot of people are expecting lower, right? We do have a level down here at around 22K. And we also have a level down here at 20K, right? These could get hit, but ultimately, I do not think we go past 15 and a half down here, right? This is out of the question for me. If we spend a lot of time and we trade lower, okay, I'm fine with that. This is going to be great time. When, if Bitcoin does come down to the 20K levels, it's going to be a great time to buy altcoins, right? Because altcoins are most likely going to get smashed lower, and that's going to be like buying the bottom. Right, when you you know i know because i've been through a bull cycle before a full cycle right a full four-year market cycle if you haven't been through a full four-year market cycle yet well then you know a lot of this stuff is going to be new to you but if you've been through that four-year cycle you know that when the bull run is happening and you go to coin gecko and you look at any given coin right if, if you looked at quant during the bull market and it was up here and it was up here trading for three hundred dollars and you looked at it where it was six months ago and it was trading for $10 and you're like, oh my God, why didn't I buy anything when it was $10 and now it's 300? Well, listen, we are essentially here in the cycle and we will be here in the future, okay? So one year from now, two years from now, we're gonna be able to look at some of these altcoins that we're buying that we bought down here at the bottom and we're gonna say, yeah, we did the right thing here. Okay, we, we stuck to a strategy, we built a portfolio for the bull market, and we did the right thing. So that is why I'm not flustered whatsoever if Bitcoin comes down here. This is crypto, okay? This is, uh, crypto has grown a lot over the past few years, but the essence has not changed since it started. It is a four-year market cycle. You buy in the bear market, you sell in the bull market, and you make a ton of money in the process, right? In 2021, that was my first true bull market where I experienced the full market cycle. And I did quite well for myself. I did quite well. And now I'm in a position where I can essentially build a nice portfolio. And I plan on making millions during this next bull run. That's why I'm here. That's why I continue to do this through my investments. Okay. So that should be your goal as well. And we are approaching, if we're already not at that time where we're building the portfolio, to sell for 100x higher in the bull market. So trading right now, short-term trading, it's really bad in the market. Volatility is very low, and then price will just drop like 20% in like 10 minutes. So short-term trading, definitely a very tough market for that at the moment. 
So BTC, what I expect is basically a range bound market going forward. All right, I'm not expecting any catastrophic drops. I'm not expecting any crazy pumps higher. I'm expecting a range bound market re realistically between 31K up here, which is the high. And if not this 24K low, maybe we come down and we test the 20K low or we test these 22K levels. But realistically right now, what I expect is a range bound market for a bit of time. Expect a very wide range, right? Between 31, maybe it goes down to 20, maybe it sticks around 22. But I'm expecting a crab choppy market until maybe end of year, November, things usually start picking up. Um, so yeah, I think it's gonna be continue to be slow like it is right now. It is the summertime, it is the end of summertime approaching. And usually things do start to pick up towards the fall, right? The winter season in general is usually better for the financial markets. That is a proven objective kind of fact. If you just do a little bit of uh, history re research on the stock market and, and the likes, the winter season always tends to be more bullish uh, for markets. So yeah, right now expect a range bound market, just to summarize everything between 31K and 24K for now, which is our current low. I'm expecting choppiness, really not much else for BTC. Now in the very short term, if I drop this down to a two hour price chart, I have drawn, look on the four hour, I have drawn this range, using this as our range high up here, at 26,800 and 24,250 as our range low. And if I'm looking for anything here, I'm looking for a sweep of this range high around 27K. And I'll look to essentially, if I get a short trigger, I'll look to play it back into the range. But yeah, this is what I'm seeing right now in terms of the lower time frames. Range high 26,800, range low 24.2K. And look for an extreme test of the range, whether we sweep the high or we sweep the low first. Play the extreme here in the mid range, it's a no trade. All right, don't play from the mid range, it greatly decreases your odds of having success. Your trade. So that's our Bitcoin TA. Should make perfect sense, but if anything is unclear, ask me right now in the live chat and I'll definitely get you an answer right away as soon as I see your comment. Let's see. Harry says, Good evening from London, UK. Good evening, Harry. Andre says, Why is Rune pumping? What is going on? Well, let's answer that question. So Thorchain Rune, very big DeFi protocol, very well established. It's been around for quite some time and it's been pumping indeed. If we take a look at our Rune price chart here, the Rune price chart on the daily has just been going straight up. You look at where this was, First week of August, August 7th, where it is now, price is up 100% exactly. Now, in terms of buying this right now, it's definitely not a buy right now after a 100% move. In the current market environment, I would personally expect some kind of pullback from this point in time. Um, but that doesn't answer your question. Your question is, why is Rune pumping? Well, I believe they are continuing to build on their protocol and people are just realizing that it's undervalued. It's, as we see here, looking at some Twitter uh, social dominance, everybody's talking about it on Twitter right now. It's like the only coin kind of doing well. In terms of an exact answer for your question, I don't have an exact answer. My assumption is just that people are kind of realizing that this is a, a nice, solid, fundamental project. But let me let me discuss what I think of Thorchain Rune, and if I want to hold something like this for the bull market. Now, personally, I'm passing on Rune in terms of the portfolio for this next bull run. Why am I passing on it? Well, I'm sticking to my rules. All right, I'm going to stick to my rules in the sense that I'm going to hold mainly new cryptos. 
I want to hold cryptos. I want to hold the tokens and coins that have not yet experienced a full bull market cycle. If you look at Thorchain Rune, it already went 1,000x essentially. Look at where this was in 2019 when it was a new coin and it didn't yet experience a bull market. Trading for 5 cents, 6 cents, right? Range bound in 2020, it was trading for, again, during that March 2020 crash, 5 cents again for a while, 10 cents, 11 cents, and then it goes up to the all-time high of $20. All right, so it went from pennies to $20. A lot of people bought this thing between $10 and $20. The price of it is now $1.87. They are bag holding. All right, if they didn't sell and realize the loss yet, they are waiting for Rune to go back up so they can sell. Now, this is not the end all be all. Some coins will be able to recover from pumping up 100, 100Xs, 1000Xs, and then coming down 99%. Some coins will be able to recover and make new highs, but on the broad spectrum, most of these coins that have already experienced a bull market cycle and pump like this are going to underperform the new shiny coins in this next bull run. So that's why Rune is not on my list personally. Could it do well? It absolutely could do well. Could it go back up to $10, $15? It absolutely could, but I'm going to pass on it. Now, in terms of why it's pumping right now, Again, it's just a solid DeFi protocol and people are kind of waking up to what it is. I'm sure there must be some kind of catalyst to, to kind of send it right now on, on what's going on. A lot of buyers stepping in, um, but I don't have the exact answer on why it is pumping. But the reason I say be careful right now is if you look at these highs from February of this year, it just swept these highs and it closed the daily candle well underneath. All right, so this is a bearish sweep and bearish swing failure pattern. And I would be a little bit cautious if you're trying to long rune up here. So let's go ahead and drop this to the lower time frames and see if we can find some kind of bearish catalysts in terms of the price. So on the one hour, again, we know $1.97 is that high from February. So what we want to be looking for essentially is, I mean, I look for bearish divergence. I look for if price is in a supply zone at a big resistance level. We know that $1.97 is a big resistance level. So that's one thing right there. In terms of divergence, it's not, it's not really that clean at all right now. So you, you can't try and force this. And it is kind of slightly there. The two hour, it's very slight. Even on the one hour, it's very slight. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would be looking for shorts on this. Now, I'm not saying it's going to go back down to $1. Could pull back. This looks like a great level at $1.43. That's 23% lower. Um, but yeah, again, just to summarize, after you sweep uh, the 2023 highs, after running 100%, be a little bit cautious if you want to buy it now, right? It's not the time, it's not the time to buy it. It's the time to really look for kind of shorts. Then if you want to buy it, you buy the pullback. Hope that makes sense, Andrea. We got Randy from Mexico in the building. What's up, Randy? How are you? Again, guys, be sure to smash that like button if you guys are just tuning in right now. I appreciate all of your support. D. Jenny from the blockchain. Have you heard anything about Francis and the Metapolitans project? No, I have not. I have not heard about, uh, I've not heard any updates, Moby. I'm not sure what's going on myself over there. Um, I definitely would appreciate more updates from Francis and, and the team over there, but yeah. I'm just as much in the dark as you all. Jasper says, hey, Connor, historically, we have a red September as well. What do you think September will bring after this happening? Uh, Jasper, good point, right? Historically, we do have a red September. What do I think September is going to bring? Same thing like I just said when I was going over Bitcoin. I'm expecting chop, all right, chop and slop. Nothing crazy higher, nothing crazy lower. I'm just expecting price to um, respect the current range that it's in. High 31K, low 24K, and just chop around in there. That's what I expect.
We got Dave saying, hey, Connor, what's up, Dave? How are you? Harry says, appreciating Connor and the Empire right now for all the alpha. Love it, Harry. Happy to have you here as well, mate. Anders, hi from Sweden, just jumped in. What's up, Anders? All right, Andrea says, my money's on Render and Rune for the next rally. Andrea, I'm liking your comments today. Renders is a coin that it used to be a low cap, it turned into a mid cap. And it was one of the top performers this year, but it's been it's, it's been going down pretty badly. Now, this isn't a new coin, right? If we look at its price history on CoinGecko, it has data going back to 2020. All right, so it was around in 2020. That means it experienced the full cycle because the bull market year was 2021. This thing went from three cents up to eight dollars and seventy cents. So it did very well. Now it's back down. It started this year. Started this year again at forty cents. Went up to two dollars eighty eight cents. So. That means that Render was a top performer, essentially. We want to pay attention to the coins that performed super well. Now, Render did this good because it's re related to artificial intelligence. Right? Render is not necessarily an AI project, but they, have, they are related to artificial intelligence. And when AI ran this year, Render was one of the coins that ran with it. Nonetheless, it outperformed most of the market this year. So it's on the list of a coin that could potentially make new all-time highs. That's an old coin, right? An old coin, it already experienced the full cycle. It already went um, from three cents to $8. That's like over a 200X, almost a 300X. Right, so renders on that list as an old coin that is potentially worth holding. So, Andrea, I like how you say render is on your list because I fully understand why, and I think it's not the worst hold for the next bull market. How high it could potentially go? 30 to $50 realistically. Let's just kind of take a look at this and see. So if render, I just said 30 to 50 for a price prediction. If render needs to go to $30, the market cap needs to go to $11.2 billion. It is possible. Current market cap is $531 million. So a $11.2 billion would be a 20x in price. It's, it's possible because this is an actual company that makes revenue with their crypto protocol, right? So I'll make a full render video to explain my thoughts. This is all live off the cuff. If you guys appreciate the live streams and me going unscripted, well then be sure to let me know by smashing that like button. But yeah, renders on the list as a coin that, you know, is can do very well in this next bull market. And to your hold, you were absolutely right about that as well, Andrea. We just got a 9.99 super chat from Dave. I just saw it right now. Dave, thank you for that super chat, my man. Greatly appreciate your support. It means a lot. Thank you. And what you said about a two-year hold as well is, yeah, if you guys don't have the patience, if you buy something right now, you should be buying stuff with the expectation that you need to hold it for two years. If you don't have that expectation, if you think it's gonna take a month to, to 10X your money, just leave, okay? Close the browser and, and go do something else if you don't have the patience to wait two years. That's the reality of the situation. The way it is, just the way it is, some things are never gonna change. Michael DJI Manor says, greetings to everyone. Nice to have you back, Connor. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Michael. I appreciate that. Appreciate your support. Good to have you here in the live chat. 
Andrews says, I've been here since late 2016, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, sir, Andrews. Andrews knows what's up. I've been accumulating stronghold. If we get back to the all-time high, $580 will become 78K. Our man Sniff is accumulating stronghold. So market cap, $2.4 million. All-time high, 5.5 cents. Yeah, um, super risky low cap play. But let's talk about these super risky low cap plays. Now, I've never heard of Stronghold before. I have no idea what it does. But what Sniff said here, especially if you guys are new, be sure to pay attention. What Sniff just said here, uh, let me find your comment. If it goes back to the all time high, $580 will become 78 grand. All right, this is what I call an asymmetric bet. When you throw a few hundred dollars into a super low cap coin that you do your research on and you like, right, you can, you can plant these seeds. I recommend to plant these seeds. I'm planting these seeds, right? A few hundred dollars can easily turn to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 grand. It's very, very possible in the bull run, right? I've caught 100Xs before. I've caught 40Xs, 50Xs before. A little bit of money turns into a lot in the blink of an eye. Of course, it takes months to years, but it feels like a, the blink of an eye. You turn a few hundred bucks into tens of thousands. It's very possible, and it will happen again. So that's one part of the portfolio you need to be building. Your asymmetric bets, right? Your, you can call them goodie bags, a few hundred dollars. Maybe if you have a bigger position or a bigger portfolio, you have more capital to play with, you can put a few thousand dollars into these asymmetric bets. And if they hit, all you need is one to do well, and the profit takes care of itself. All right, so Sniff, I wish you all the best with SHX. I don't hold this. I probably won't hold it. But I have the same idea with my low caps. Let's see, McNess says, when you get a chance, can you check on Matic, specifically if it does look weak? Yes, we can look at Matic. So, does Matic look weak? No. Um, first of all, McNaz, if you recall, a few weeks ago, I, I put out a Matic trade. I did not hold it all the way down here. Find it. Uh, let's see. This trade here. Um, this was posted on July 25th. So long story short, I didn't hold this trade all the way till now, but the final target was 56 cents. It hit the low of 53 cents down here. All right, so a swing short was just hit. After a move like this, right, it's really not the time to be looking to short the market again. Could it leg down again? Yeah, it could. But even if it does want to leg down again, it's probably going to consolidate for quite some time before it legs down, or it's going to grind higher. All right, it's going to form some kind of wedge or, or pennant or flag and then tank if it wants to make another lower leg. Uh, but right now, you know, it just hit a huge swing target down here at 53 cents. This is the bear market bottom. <laughs> really, the bear market bottom is down here. It hit 30 cents in June of last year. But nonetheless, 53 cents, a major swing, major market swing to the downside. So, yeah, I would not be looking to short Matic at all right now. We'll drop this to the lower time frames. So notice on Matic, I drew a similar range on Bitcoin, and I said, watch for price to sweep the range high and come back in and Matic has already done that okay so this chart is kind of what i'm expecting bitcoin to do in this consolidation it swept this range high the reason i marked this price as the range high is on the bounce 
This is where it bounced to before reversing again. All right, so this is how I mark our range high. And anyway, price swept the range back inside now. So realistically, I would watch for it to maybe come down and test the mid range from this point. Um, but yeah, it just looks like consolidation. Just it does look like consolidation. And with that being said, we have a new week starting up as well. So I would probably just wait for the Monday range to form before I did any short term moves, any short term trades. Because again, after a huge sell off like this, relief will come. There will be a relief rally. And it's going to wreck all of the people that still think the market is going to go lower. Short squeeze is, is what that is called. So yeah, watch for a short squeeze. Um, any short-term moves in this range, scalp trading only. I right, look at the consolidation here. Copy market mid-range, really, it's a no trade. Top 10, can you check ADAQ, please, where it can drop? What is ADAQ? Never heard of that one. I'm never, I don't think ADAQ is a crypto top 10. Christopher Constance just joined us. What's up, Chris? It's not too late. It is not too late for that. Uh, we will look at a tour in a little bit. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to look at our Twitter wisdom, then we'll get back to the charts. So this week for our Twitter wisdom, if you are not already following me on Twitter, go follow me on Twitter at CSellCrypto. Get on that. And I am currently running a Zeely campaign. So if you want to get started in this, go click on the link on the, the pinned tweet on my Twitter profile. Um, but yeah, essentially, friend tech is all the buzz right now. So if you have not already watched this video that I uploaded just a few hours ago on Frentech. Go watch that because this market is not doing anything. Everybody still left in crypto is either just buying their DCA altcoins for their for their bull market portfolio and living their life doing other things, right? Being productive in other areas, or they are doing on-chain activities on the Ethereum blockchain, such as Frentech. All right, or buying meme coins, um, buying the newest Telegram bot to launch, right? Very risky stuff for your capital, which I do partake in from time to time. As you guys know, I've talked about meme coins quite a bit in the past few months. And I'm not going to stop talking about memes because it's a viable way to make money. But going forward, I will be spending much more time in regards to creating content of why I started my channel in the first place, all right? Why I started the channel in the first place was to essentially, one, educate people about crypto, but also teach people how to, to invest, use DeFi, et cetera, to make money in the market, all right? If you wanna see me talk about this two years ago in my first video, go watch this video. It's the first one on my channel. And I talk about what we're gonna do on the channel here when I first started, and that message hasn't changed, okay? So we're gonna get back to the original message here on the Crypto Empire channel and more, more stuff about essentially preparing for the next bull run and less kind of nonsense. It's very easy to get bored and just, just trade memes, but uh, there's more to it than that, of course. Anyway, let's go ahead and answer Jasper's question. Get back to these charts. Jasper says, Connor, I would love to know what you think of Adam slash ETH market structure on the daily time frame. I bought the lows. All right, so Jasper thinks Adam is going to outperform Ethereum. Take a look at that. The daily. So, Adam on the daily time frame. 
has been in a very strong downtrend versus Ethereum. We're going to the three day. This thing's been in a strong downtrend for the past 20 months. It peaked in January of 2022. Nothing but lower highs and lower lows, essentially. Okay, so you want to look for this to break the downtrend. This is your, your break line. And you bought at 0 0.004672. Drop a line there. Six seven two. All right, so you bought it right here. What do I think about that? Yeah, I think you probably bought pretty close to the bottom. Um. I think you did good, Jasper. Again, Adam, very solid coin. I can't talk anything bad about Cosmos Adam. But is it something that I want to hold for my bull market portfolio? No, it's not. An old coin, market cap is very high. I think there's going to be a, a lot better returns on other altcoins, personally speaking. But yeah, this versus Ethereum does look somewhat bottomed. And while we're talking about coins versus ETH, it looks good, Jasper, to answer your question. But if we look at Bitcoin ETH, pull up the ETH BTC chart. If you look at Bitcoin versus ETH, usually, and I'm also going to pull up Bitcoin dominance on the right side of the screen here. Okay, so usually what happens, this is Bitcoin dominance on the, let's go to the daily time frame. So Bitcoin dominance here on the daily. Usually after the market sells off, like we just saw, Bitcoin dominance pumps. We see huge green candles because all the money is, all the altcoins are being sold back into Bitcoin because people want that stable kind of place to park their funds while the market is crazy volatile. But the market just crashed. Bitcoin dropped 15% in a day. And Bitcoin dominance dropped right along with it. This is quite rare to see. We usually see the opposite. And with that, if we look at the ETH BTC chart here in the left side of our screen, we saw ETH BTC pump higher when Bitcoin crashed. All right, so this is very uncommon. Usually the opposite happens. Usually we see Bitcoin totally outperform Ethereum. And usually we see all coins sell off into Bitcoin, but this time around, we're seeing Bitcoin dominance drop after this big move lower. So some interesting dynamics at play. And if Ethereum takes the lead here, that's going to be pretty promising for all coins. Not sure exactly how it does play out. Um, I'm mainly just watching our weekly time frame for ETH BTC. Go ahead and make this a single chart again. Here in the weekly time frame, main thing I, I want to see is this trend line to break, right? These highs get cleared and for ETH BTC to start tearing up again, right? When ETH BTC starts to move like this, that's going to be essentially altcoin season. And if your portfolio is not prepared by then, uh, you're going to be too late. Now is the time to start building that port. And um, just stay on the lookout. Within one week, I'm going to have some crazy good resources for you. Uh, they'll all be available for free as well uh, to building your portfolio. I'm working on them right now. I don't want to talk too much about it, get your expectations too high, uh, but it's going to be free. So I'm here to, I, I want to see everybody just absolutely crush it in this next run. So a lot of, a lot of really beneficial resources are on the way for everybody in the crypto empire community. But again, I'm not going to talk too much about it right now. We'll see when it's released. Let's see, Woody says tuning in from Maui, Hawaii on her day off. Working with the American Red Cross disaster team for the Ayana fires over here. Woody, you are doing good, my man. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in for, to the live stream. And I mean, that's awesome that you're out there working with the Red Cross, helping the people of Hawaii out after that crazy destruction that just occurred over there. 
Thanks for tuning into the stream, Woody. Stay safe over there in Hawaii. Sniff says Thor Dex lets you trade native coins for other native coins. Yes, Sniff. So very familiar with Thor Chain. If you go to my channel and search Rune, I have tutorials. I've made many videos on it. Uh, one year ago, yeah, basically two years ago. I've been talking about Thor Chain for a long time. I know exactly what it is. Um, it's just an old coin, and I don't want to hold an old old coin like that until into into this next bull market. Reverend flashback, Connor. In a couple of hours, three million INJ tokens will be unlocked. Three percent of the supply. Twenty-three million. Just to let you know, wouldn't be surprised if we see a dump. Thank you for looking out, Reverend flashback. So INJ. Again, going back to when we were talking about render earlier, preparing for the next bull run. Way too sloppy. Preparing for this next bull run. INJ is a coin that makes the list. It does indeed make the list. So first talked about INJ here in the channel down here. All right, it went up to 10 bucks essentially, like 3x from when I called INJ, if you will. Um, and now it's in this huge range, as you can see, between $10 and $5. Now, what I would look for INJ, exactly what you just said, Reverend Flashback, I would be looking for a sell-off. Right, if this is a coin you want to hold until this next bull market, which I think is a viable coin to hold into the next run. Let's say for let's say INJ goes to 100. Only an $8.4 billion market cap. Very, very possible. It's not out of reach at all. It's only a 12x from current price, too. Right. 180 would be a 22x, $15 billion market cap, and not that crazy. Because if you guys remember, Cardano went to a $90 billion market cap. Solana went to an $80 billion market cap. Matic went to like a $25 billion market cap. Polkadot went to $55 billion. These numbers are not that out of reach when the bull market happens. Okay, so yeah, INJ, definitely a coin that you want to be able to buy as low as possible. So if I was to buy it, I would want to wait until a big sell-off happened. Dip got bought up. I mean, this thing's crazy strong. So who knows if it comes, but what I see on this chart is down here. Right, towards five. Right. I would want to buy this as close or sub five dollars as, as possible. Down here. At the range low. You gotta be patient to wait for the range low to happen. Maybe this token unlock will be the catalyst. Send it down here. But there's a huge difference between buying it at $7.75 and $5 when you're looking at price targets north of $100 for the bull market. Big difference in gains. So thank you, um, Reverend Flashback, for bringing that up here. Rigoberto in the building. What's happening, Rigoberto? Good to see you. Jeff Moss says bear trap. Yeah, I agree, Jeff. Um, I would definitely not be looking to short right now. We go to Dex Tools. And we look at let's take a look at the casino. So Sniff just brought up Donut. So this is the other side of crypto, right? Right now, you were either talking about solid fundamental projects for the next bull market, or you are gambling on chain. That's the reality of it. Or you're talking about both, which is fine. Um, but you know, that's what's happening. The market is so boring and dead right now. Anyway, Donut never heard of this in my entire life. First time I'm seeing it right now. Sniff says he wish wishes he bought it before it went 100 x Don't we all? Don't we all sniff? Um yeah, it looks like nonsense. 
pretty nonsense, but who knows how high it will go. Um, yeah, this, no update in terms of monkeys. I don't have anything to say. Looks like the, uh, the, the monkeys team is, is doing some kind of in real life marketing campaign. We'll see if it has any kind of effect, but uh, yeah, price back to where we started, like we talked about last week. To answer uh, your question, CRO8. DJ from the blockchain, what do you think of established projects that have reached all time lows like Algo cannot run again? Yes, Moby, good point. Good thing to talk about here as well. The old coins like Algorand, if you look at something like Algorand, like this thing is at the March 2020 lows. Can this run again? Yes, it can run again. Because you're going to have some fools out there waiting for the all-time high, right? You're going to have complete clowns waiting for $2 on Algorand. Now, I would not be looking for a 20x on algo. I would use this chart. I would pick out some levels. I see 45 cents. I see 78 cents, 80 cents. Maybe you want to hold out. You can hold out for 98 cents. Right? If you're going to play something like algo, Buying it here at nine cents, right? I would not be looking for for two dollars or a new all time high. I would be looking for a five x, maybe a seven x, maybe a ten x. That's it. And I would get out. I would take my money. And I would put it into cash or Bitcoin or Ethereum. And I would go live my life, right? I would buy that new house. I would buy that new car. I would take that vacation, etc. With the money you make, don't be the bag holder, greedy idiot that waits for $2 on something like this. You can make money with the old coins, but just don't be the fool that, that's waiting for new all-time highs. Even something like Filecoin. Filecoin I like. I'm, I'm bullish on Filecoin. I really like Filecoin, but I'm not stupid. All right, I'm not stupid to wait for $200 again. All right, you, you, you kinda gotta use your brain a little bit. And one thing you always have to look at as well, something like Filecoin, when it was trading up here $180, $200, the tokenomics were very different from where they are right now. There was a lot less tokens in circulation. All right, if you look at the circulating supply, right now there's 40, 442 million in circulation. I'm not sure what it was back in, back in April of 2021 in terms of the number of circulating tokens, but I know it was much lower than 442 million. All right, so just understanding the basics of tokenomics, I know to not look for a new all-time high on an old coin that has been inflating for the past three years. But I also understand how the market works and I know that it can easily head back up here to $25, right? Even, even 38 bucks. And Truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised to see like fifty to seventy dollars on something like Filecoin. Right? And trading at a price of three dollars fifty cents, if it goes back up to seventy, that's a twenty x. You twenty twenty times you multiply your money with an old coin. There's going to be idiots waiting for two hundred dollars again. You're going to sell at fifty to seventy. You're going to take your money and go live your life. These idiots are going to be waiting for two hundred. You're going to laugh at them they don't understand how the markets work they don't understand tokenomics right so yeah you can make money with the old coins but you need to have a proper uh, plan and strategy going into them and you can't think that it's going to go back up to the all-time highs when it's been inflating for two years three years straight anyways that was a good question there moby brought up brought up something that i could share that makes a lot of sense that more people need to hear McNaz says, with Rose, HBAR, and LYX experiencing full bull runs, you still think they will hit new all-time highs? Um, 
Yeah, so like I said, a few of them are going to be outliers. Rose possibly, yes. All-time high of Rose is 57 cents right now. Again, it, it, it only needs to go to like 35 cents. Eat Rose. I do think it will make a new all-time high, personally. Um, but even when it goes back up to 45, 50 cents, we're up 10x. So we'll be able to to make it a risk-free investment by then. Now I'm a bit ag aggressive. Right now, you know, I don't plan on selling any of my bull market bags until like a 10x. We're taking my first initial bow to profit. So, yeah, I mean, even if Rose ends up failing, I still think it will go back up to 45, 50 cents and I'll be able to de-risk. So I have a plan in regards to that and H bar, LYX as well. LYX is the most promising of those for sure. Just because of the fact that in the last bull market, it didn't exist as a blockchain. Now the mainnet is live and it's going to be used and there's a use case for the token. So, uh, yeah, and HBAR are very bullish too with everything going on with the Fed now integration, their, their governing council, everything looks good. So those coins are bullish. I like those coins. Andre, what's the new coins that you're accumulating? So I made a few videos about them, and I'm gonna, like I just said, Andrea, be on the lookout within the next week. I'm gonna have some awesome resources for everybody in the Crypto Empire community. Uh, but A0, Al, Casper, all new coins, Stargate, new coin, Synapse, new coin, right? Just look at the channel. Um, but yeah, Tau for sure. Tau is, is very, very bullish in my opinion. Decentralized AI. This is one, again, going back to the video I made, our buy zones, I really like to buy it in, in the buy zones I outlined, right? Buying it over here at $63, I bought some, but I, I want it lower to build an actual proper position. This can go to thousands of dollars a coin. If you don't think so, or if you don't know why I say that, watch the video I made of why I explained why I'm so bullish on it. Everything's in there. Aloxa, any base chain plays slash gems? Um, at the moment, no. At the moment, no. I'm not playing really anything on base except for Frentech. On Frentech, I bought a few shares and they went up. So I was able to sell and um, you know, make some ETH and just essentially get into rooms for free because I made some ETH. Um, but in terms of base chain, let's look at this article from yesterday, August 19th. This article, Coinbase's incubated base blockchain attracts over 500 scam tokens. Scam tokens generated nearly $3.7 million in trading volume on decentralized exchanges on the base network. All right, so Aloxa, if you're playing the base chain coins, you have to understand that you are in a cesspool of scammers of absolute low lives, of developers that are launching these coins and all they want to do is steal your ETH. You just reminded me of something. Let's talk about this. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the total three market cap, or even the total two. So if you look at the total two, $530 billion currently. The high of this year, 662 billion. Right, the high of this year is up here. So, what's been happening all year long is whether you're on base, whether you're on the Ethereum blockchain, whether you're on the Binance Smart Chain, it doesn't matter. What's been happening all year long is since April, money has only been leaving. Money has only been leaving crypto. We got no new money coming in, but you're seeing people gamble on, on chain, right? And I mean, listen, I've taken gambles this year. I've lost money and I've hit huge wins on chain. But what's happening is because no new money is coming in and there's so many scams, so many scams, Ethereum is rotating hands. Ethereum is rotating from individual retail traders' hands to the developers' hands. 
once the developer rug pulls their scam and they have your Ethereum, it's not going back into the meme market. All right, it's staying in their wallet until the next bull market and they're going to sell it. So money is just being extracted right now. It, it's like overall, the, the most logical thing you should be doing is just buy the solid fundamental coins, buy the gems, buy the good ones, because the on-chain stuff is redacted. It is it's bad. Like it's just money rotating hands from retail to scam developers, and it doesn't enter back into the system. There are still on-chain coins that are going 10x in a day, but it's much less than it was two, three months ago when the meme season was really here, all right? So to answer your question, Aloxa, no base chain plays gems right now. It's a cesspool of scams. Anders, Connor, I found a new coin like a month ago. It's a layer two and had a fair launch. All tokens in circulation, market cap at 10 mil. If you feel like it, you might have a look, new project. Yeah, feel free to share it. It's called Brock, he says here. It rock. Um, yeah, the low market cap could do well. I'm not going to look into it right now. We have limited time on the stream, but I appreciate you sharing that, Anders. Jasper, I'm so happy that you have had this happen in your life, Connor. A little bit of money turning into a lot. Yeah, I mean, if if you play the game, life in life you win sometimes and you lose sometimes. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I've sat down at the poker table and I've made thousands. I've sat down at the poker table and busted within three hands and left. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Same thing in crypto. Um, so yeah, I hope it happens to everybody, and it probably will. And you know, if you pay attention to what I say, we're probably going to be buying similar coins, and we'll see what happens. But anyway, Chris Constance asking about a tour. Let's take a look at a tour. All right, so this thing is on a tear. Check the market cap. Fifty-two mil right now. In April it was eleven mil. All right, so ten x in a few months' time. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, listen. Definitely it's encouraging because one criteria that I look for when buying buying an altcoin for the next bull run is it is it outperforming right now in the bear market? We're looking into Caspa a lot. And Caspa is interesting. It's been crushing the bear market. There are some kind of Ishy things with it, but for the most part, it seems like a very solid project. Now that I've actually done my research and looked into it more, I'll make a video about it to kind of explain what I think. But Ator, similar to Caspa, where it's just the top performer in this bear market, and that should, in theory, carry over to the bull. Um, but personally, I'm going to pass on Ator. I could be totally wrong. Um, but yeah, I would at least wait for a retracement. Too late. I don't know if it's too late, Chris. Market cap right now is 52 mil. All right, this can go to 500 to a billion if it's legit, which I do think it is. So maybe not too late, but I just, I'm going to pass on it personally. All right, we're gonna look at a few more here. Um, 
Jeff Moss, this is a good time to slurp. Oh, it's worth picking up Filecoin now. Yeah, I do think so. Like I just said, I think it can, you know, 10, 20 X from the current price. Don't be waiting for $200, but 40, 50, 60. Yeah, all day. I like Filecoin a lot. Um, let's see. Thomas, love your video on VRA. Awesome, Thomas. Appreciate that. I'll be making more vids on VRA. I like the coin. Good one. Everybody asking for my low caps. I've said it a few times already on stream. I, I'm going to make some awesome resources for all you guys. Um, and I've shared a lot already. But um, just wait like a week and I'm going to have some very easy to follow stuff for you. <clears throat> you should share, share some gems. Dude, look at my channel, man. And like I said 10 times already, just going to have some, making a nice... Nice resource for you all. Just relax. Everybody's like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Just take, take, take. Relax. Relax. Uh, what else is going on? Let's look at a few more coins. Where the ADA? Oh, top 10 was asking for Cardano. Before he was like ADAQ. No idea what ADAQ is. Well, that doesn't look great. Let's see. ADA, bear market lows back down to 23. Yeah, I mean, come on. If we're not at the bottom now, we are extremely close. This happened last, this was December of last year. 25 cents goes to 45 back down to 25 cents absolute worst case is we have another black swan and it comes down here to 17 could happen but for now you just got to respect the range The range is range high up here at 40 cents, range low down here at 20 cents. And until the range is broken, I mean, you can just basically expect ping pong in the range. The volume here. So volume, yeah, that's very high, highest it's been. Could could be considered capitulation volume. Not really though. This is this is more that volume. Respect the range, top ten. We're we're towards the range lows. Right, this is your range range high up here at 42, as you see when it deviated the range high earlier in the year. That was the short range low when it deviated the range low. That was your long. It just deviated the range low again. We swept it on last week's sell-off. Okay, so yeah, if anything, we're gonna bounce first before we break down. Okay, so I would be looking for a bounce first. Maybe around 30 to 32. 33 cents is your mid-range. If we're going to break it, don't think we're just going to break it from here. I would be looking for a bounce to short if we're going to break that range low on, on Cardano ADA. All right, guys, we've been going for an hour and four minutes. I'm going to wrap it up right now because I do have somewhere to be tonight on this fine Sunday evening.
but I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. Smash that like button if you just got in here now. I appreciate your support. We covered a lot. So if you just tuned in, rewind the stream, you will find a ton of very valuable and actionable information that you can apply to your own crypto experience. But again, thank you everybody for being here. I'm here every single Sunday. So if you miss this one, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. I also post regular videos throughout the week. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of that. Now, if you do want more of me, you can get that at CryptoEmpireCo.io on my website and join the Discord. Get inside the Discord. You basically have access, direct access to me through DMs. You can ask about particular coins. You can see what I'm buying and selling, what I am trading, etc. All available on my website if you are interested in joining that. If you want to trade, I use BitGet for trading, for both buying spot and short-term trading, right? BitGet, great exchange. You don't need KYC. Very high withdrawal limits, but you need a VPN. I like it. If you want to sign up, use my link down in the description below. Well, we talked about a lot this stream. Um, if you're not on FriendTech, check FriendTech out. Watch the video I just posted about that. With that being said, it's time to wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I'll see you all throughout this week. I will be doing some traveling this upcoming week. So you're gonna be seeing some videos from some different locations. I'll be on the road. So be looking out for that. It's gonna be fun. I'll see all you guys from my next destination in the world.